in this week's parsha, and in next week's parsha of Shlach, and then in the parsha of Korach, and then again at the in parsha's Pinchas. It's a uh, string of uh, very negative occurrences to Klal Yisrael. And it happens at a strange time, uh, not clear why it happens. Uh, according to the Ramban, everything goes in chronological order. So they're coming off of Mamad Har Sinai, and they're coming off of the uh, installation of the Kohanim and the Levim. And Moshe says, uh, he says it to uh, Yisrael, but he says it to Klal Yisrael, no simanach nu el The grand march is on. We're traveling now there to Israel. So uh, that, uh, that is a uh, most, that's the most positive thing that in the whole story here that after Mountain Torah, the Jewish people become organized. That's the, the Kohanim, the Levim, Machna Yisrael. And they're counted, and they have flags, and they're going. And no simanachnu l'amokom, we're traveling there to Israel. And at this moment, when everything should be going well, it starts to fragment starts to break down. The first thing is that Yisro doesn't want to go for whatever reasons. I think I wrote about it in the sheet this week. He doesn't want to go. Moshe begs him to go. The good that awaits us we will share with you can't be better than this. And he says, no, you know, I'm returning a large evil, I'm going back to Midya. The Rashi says, quoting the Medrash, that he had positive motives. He had uh, a, uh, an opportunity, he felt, to uh, be Megayer people, to bring them closer to the Shechina, to wean them away from Avodah Zorah. So he felt that if by going back, he was doing a positive thing. And that the positive thing that he was going to maybe do in Midian overweighed what Moshe asked him to do here. But uh, it had a negative effect on the Jewish people. Moshe's own father-in-law doesn't want to go there to Israel. What does he know that we don't know? Which is always the problem in the behavior of people who assert themselves in leadership. And he did so because uh, he gave Moshe the Eitzah at the point to uh, show him Sorry, Mayo, sorry. He was the one that gave the idea, he set up the system. So uh, after that contribution, so then the question arises, what does he know that we don't know and therefore they're weakened? Then there's a second incident. It says, Vayiyom kimisonanim. It doesn't say misonanim, it says kimisonanim. Like they were misonanim. Misonanim means to complain. To uh, be uh, naysayers. To say that uh, it's not good. So uh, Rashi points out that kimisonanim is because they really had no cause to complain. But many times in life, it happens to individuals, 
and it happens to nations as well, that for some reason they're you know, not in a good mood. <coughs> for whatever reason. We are all uh, subject to moods. There are days that we feel uh, happier and days that we feel less. And uh, therefore, uh, this was a down day for them. They, they were, it's not good. So when things are not good, then uh, people uh, find fault with everything. Doesn't make any difference. If you, uh, if you uh, were uh, caught in a terrible traffic jam getting home, and it took you an hour to get out of the traffic jam, and you come home, and your wife gives you the best supper imaginable, you don't like it. It's no good. Not because the supper is uh, not good, not because of the fact that your wife didn't work hard to prepare it. I'm not in the mood. It's a psychological, uh, psychological uh, weakness that exists within us that when we're not in the mood, then nothing is in the mood. It doesn't make any difference. So that's Kim is on it. Why they're not in the mood, not clear. The Medrash says they're not in the mood because of the fact that now for the first time they, re, you know, when they accepted the Torah at Sinai, they said, Nasev and Ishma. Oh, we take it. Don't, don't, don't bother to tell us about it. Now, afterwards, they had reflection. They thought about it. And they said, wow, well, what did we get in ourselves into here? Such a difficult Torah. So many rules and laws. We made a mistake. The only thing is that there was a bris, a covenant, and the covenant was irreversible. And they were aware of that. <coughs> Excuse me. So they are very frustrated. They're disappointed. They don't like it. But they can't get out of it. So uh, they complain about the food. Because <coughs> that also is part of human nature. Uh, anybody who ever ran a yeshiva will tell you that they complain about the food. No matter what food is, because that's the nature of the beast. Is they complain about the food, and therefore they say, "Mi achileinu vosser." Well, we could have had meat here instead. We have mon. So you can make the mon taste like meat, but it's tofu. They didn't want it. They wanted real meat, and then it all pours out. So Kharnu is a dogo a shernohal be mitzrayim chinon. So Rashi says chinon meaning free of the mitzvahs. In Egypt we were slaves, but you didn't have to bench. You didn't have to make a bracha. You didn't have to eat kosher. There was chinon. It was free. You could do whatever we want. And here, so we're eating manna from heaven. We're eating the food of angels, but that's not what we want. We lost our uh, freedom. And uh, this distresses Moshe more than anything else. We see that uh, in all of the uh, terrible challenges that existed in the Midbar, 
when the Jewish people rebelled, Moshe always stands strong. And by the ego, by Korach, by the Maraglin, he always, Moshe is Mr. Iron. And he never succumbs. And here he is uh, uh, speechless, powerless. And he says to Rebbe Shalom, you killed me already. I, you know, I can't do it. Nothing I can do anymore. So Moshe can argue against the ego, but he can't argue when they want pickles or watermelon. There, for that, there's no argument. How am I going to convince them? In the ego, I can convince them that paganism is wrong. By the Maraglim, I can convince them that their soil is better than the exile. But I can't, uh, I said, the Zacharnu, we wanted to have uh, the Kishuim, Vavatichim, and that I have no answer for. I cannot satisfy them. And uh, that is really the beginning of the unraveling of the whole thing. The whole spirit of going to Eretz Israel is sapped from them. They are weakened beyond uh, any uh, spiritual strength. And therefore, they're open to whatever, uh, whatever rebellion, whatever populist slogan will be advanced, they're, they're going to be for it. They're not going to be able to resist it. And it will be compounded by the fact that now a plague breaks out. The misonanim are punished. So then the Jewish people say, you know, the Moshe, you killed the Jewish people. What kind of God is this that he's killing people? And... Uh, uh, really, this week's Parsha is the crisis point in the whole story in the Chumash regarding the desert and regarding the generation of the Dora Midbar. And uh, it has uh, deep influence and effect on later generations as well, till our time. Because of the fact that somehow it didn't work out. It's not the way we thought it was going to be. It became too heavy a burden on us. And when I uh, when I was growing up, so in the the Yiddish speaking community, people used to say, "Schwerz is I naid." And if you remember that, but it's hard to be a Jew. Shabbos, it's this, it's that, it's hard. There are uh, definite drawbacks. But I remember uh, 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 Meisha always used to say, or Meisha Feinstein, uh, it says, noch schwerer nicht zu sein naiv. It's harder not to be Jewish. We'll admit that it's hard. We'll admit that it's challenging. It's not easy. But it's uh, more difficult not to be. And that remains true till today in all areas. So because of that, therefore, this is the challenge that the Parsha discusses. And this is what creates for us the preface to everything else that's going to happen in the next few Parshas and really throughout the end. And why the door on midboard disappears? Because of the fact that somehow they could not overcome the challenges. It's too hard for them. So that's why it begins Vayehi, saying in Vayehi Alaloshan Tsora. It's a portent of bad things that are going to happen. And unfortunately, they happened. And that becomes the narrative that we see in the Parsha. I'm a Hanani of an Akashi, I'm a Rasa Kadi Warhu, as Akos is Israel.